Good to see you on this Sunday. The Prime Minister is facing some new questions about foreign interference in Canada after two federal leaders, Jagmeet Singh and Elizabeth May, offered up different interpretations of the report by the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians. There are a number of uh, the conclusions of the National Security and, uh, and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians report uh, that we uh, don't entirely align with. And that actually is uh, demonstrated by the fact that you know, two party leaders, both Elizabeth May and Jigmeet Singh, who uh, read the, that report uh, in its entirety, come to differing conclusions on the interpretation of what it means. It was the Prime Minister just this morning in Switzerland. Those different interpretations he's talking about have led to even more questions about what exactly is in this report, the parts that we can't see, and what Canadians should take away from it. For more on the government's response, I spoke with the Minister for Public Safety, Dominic LeBlanc, a bit earlier. Minister LeBlanc, thanks for making the time. Good morning, Rosemary. We now have heard from two leaders, the NDP and the Green Party uh, leader, who have seen these un unredacted reports. Jagmeet Singh says he's more alarmed than ever. Elizabeth May says she's relieved. What are Canadians supposed to do with these two different conclusions? Well, you'll understand that I, I don't think it's helpful for me to comment on what leaders of the political parties that have taken the security clearance and accepted to read the unredacted report what their impressions are of the report. Uh -huh. I'm very glad that Mr. Singh and Ms. May read the report. I wish Mr. Polyev would do the same thing. I think that they come to the conversation with a context as leaders of political parties that sure. Mr. Polyev will not have. We think, Rosemary, that one of the best ways to perhaps reassure Canadians uh, around these different versions or around some of the stuff that's been in the public space is to let uh, Justice Ugg do her work and review all of these documents and she can come to conclusions. It's an independent Court of Appeal judge who's already seized of, seized of these matters. I, I, I get that, but in the interim, Canadians are forced now to parse what everybody else is saying about the report. Why has your government let things get to this point and what are you going to do to provide more clarity? So, uh, you'll forgive me, Rosemary, our government hasn't let anything get to this point. You have an independent committee of parliamentarians, senators and MPs from all political parties, that issue a report. Uh, and then... The report they has want... now been out for two weeks, and right. we don't have any clarity about who uh, they are alleging are, are doing these acts. And now we have different impressions from other party leaders about what they're seeing. That's the part that the government could be um, acting on or taking some leadership on. Yeah, we've taken leadership on the issue of foreign interference over many years, but we're not able by law to uh, announce a series of names and the opposition MPs, particularly the Conservatives, that pretend we can just get up and read a list of names and all the names on this supposed list would be equal one to the other. It's completely irresponsible and it's illegal. So there's a lot yeah. of simplification going on. I, I take the comments of Ms. May and, and Mr. Singh uh, obviously very seriously. I too have read the unredacted uh, version of the report and I've read many, many CSIS intelligence documents in this area. I also know that the context is important. Some information changes over time as different information comes in. Sure. That's, that's why we think that Justice Hogg may be, just because she is seized of these matters already, all of the appropriate security uh, circumstances are in place. We think that may be a very useful way, and Parliament voted, with the exception yeah. of the Green Party, unanimously to have her do this work. But, but, but you understand that Justice Ugg may also choose not to name uh, the individuals in this report for the same concerns that you've made. So what, like, are, are we just supposed to live under this sort of cloud of suspicion because no one can find a way, and I understand there's security limitations, but no one can find a way <laughs> to address this and reassure Canadians? But, but again, so it's, it's hypothetical, Rosemary, but if a court of appeal justice uh, Quebec Court of Appeal Justice is also not able to announce a list of names. I think it shows the fakery on the part of the Conservatives that pretend this is a magic solution. Uh, I think that the intelligence services, the RCMP, continue to look at all of these matters. I have a lot of confidence that in cases that reach a certain threshold or that warrant that kind of intervention, uh, they're perfectly able in their independent judgment to do this work and we think that political leaders that are able to themselves look as Mr. Singh and Ms. May did mm -hmm. at the unredacted report 
can take their responsibility as party leaders. That's something that certainly the Liberal uh, Party is always anxious to do. Uh, and I have a lot of confidence in the processes that are in place. But yeah. no other democracy stands up and reads a list of no, names and I, no, of uh, people yes. who show up in intelligence I, reports. I, I understand that, and, I, and, and I, I totally get that, and I think Canadians probably do, too, too. But surely there must be something else that can be done to sort of reassure people about what we are dealing with um, to, so that they know that the people who are elected officials on Parliament Hill are not suspect. Surely there's something that, some middle ground here, another process that we could examine or that the government could come up with. Is that not your responsibility? And, and so I, I totally share that concern. You're absolutely right, Rosemary. That is a reasonable concern that we as a government uh, obviously share. Um, we think that the intelligence services and the RCMP can do a significant work in this regard. Um, we also think that political leaders can take their responsibilities. Um, so I have a lot of confidence in the process to disrupt uh, and to counter this foreign interference. But another thing, so just this week, uh, this past week, Rosemary, a number of caucuses were briefed by officials uh, of the uh, of CSIS, of the Security and Intelligence Services, and the Sergeant at Arms, about exactly what constitutes foreign interference, how they cannot be unwittingly perhaps drawn into what may turn out to be uh, a circumstance of foreign interference. So parliamentarians, MPs and senators also have an obligation, as does the government, to make available to them mm -hmm. the best advice possible uh, so they can, they can protect themselves from what is a, a circumstance taking place in Western democracies. I had a conversation with the U.S. Homeland Security Secretary about exactly this context yeah. in the United States two weeks ago. Um, Jagmeet Singh says the Prime Minister has failed to act on what is in the report. When I pressed him on that to understand whether that meant that the Prime Minister uh, knows names, or that names might be people within the Liberal caucus, he obviously didn't say anything because he would have been in trouble. But is there something that the Prime Minister should be acting on based on what is in this report that he hasn't acted on? So I, I have uh, every confidence that the Prime Minister has taken his responsibilities very seriously. Uh, is on top of all these issues. As I said, Rosemary, our government is the only government that has put in place any measures to detect and disrupt foreign interference, which CSIS has said started over 11 years ago when Mr. Polyev, strangely enough, was minister responsible for democratic institutions. So the Conservatives, frankly, come to the conversation uh, quite late. Uh, our government has continued to strengthen and evolve the measures. The Hug Report and the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians Report frankly give us uh, also additional advice on yeah. how we can strengthen these measures and that's the work we're going to continue to do as well. Well let me ask you one question about some of that part of it and that is the Bill C-70, the Foreign Agent Registry and has other changes as well. There are some concerns as you know by civil society groups that maybe now you're moving too quickly to try and get this into place before the next election. Um, what do you say to those who, who think that maybe there's not enough scrutiny being done on, on the bill? So, uh, obviously, we think that the legislation that passed the House of Commons last week uh, with uh, unanimous support strikes the right balance in terms of giving intelligence services the tools they need in a digital communications world to do their work. The foreign influence uh, transparency registry is an important thing that other parties have called for for a number of years. Sure. So we think Parliament came together uh, in, a very, in a very important way. It was a nonpartisan effort. Uh, nothing removes the obligation of the security services to get judicial warrants, so the judicial oversight remains in place. The charter rights and the privacy rights that Canadians understandably expect to be respected uh, are in exactly the same position as it was before the, as they were before the legislation was passed. So it doesn't weaken any of those protections or the oversight, but it gives new tools in an evolving threat environment for the security services to do the work that Canadians and parliamentarians should want them to do. Okay, Minister LeBlanc, we'll leave it there. Thank you for your time. Have a great weekend, Rosemary. Thank you.